Welcome to Endless Learning Training Series The Membrane-Based Desalination Technology. In this video we will study about how to repair a pressure gauge which is out of calibration. How to repair a pressure gauge out of calibration. A pressure gauge out of calibration. The gauge may constantly point off of zero when there's no pressure in the line. The gauge is consistently reading 5% above or below the range it really should be reading based on your other master gauge, pointer jumping, sluggish movement. Dismantle the gauge and renovate the case, glass, and bezel using a special jack or pointer puller to remove the pointer. Most dials can be cleaned by wiping gently with a sponge, soap, and warm water. Obstinate dirty spots can be removed by rubbing lightly with fine pumice powder taking care to avoid the scale markings. All parts of the gauge are cleaned and were deemed necessary. Inspection and replace any severely worn or defective parts such as the movement, link assembly, dial, and link screws. In addition, all broken, cracked or blemished lenses and cases are inspected. Raise the pressure to about 25% above the maximum scale reading and leave it there for 10 or 20 seconds as a test for leakage. Slowly release the pressure to zero and observe that the pointer returns to its original position tapping the gauge if necessary. If the pointer fails to return it is a sign that the tube has deteriorated and requires replacement. Raise the pressure and note readings throughout the scale on rising and falling pressures. If these show a constant error and if the hysteresis is not excessive, it can be assumed that the tube is satisfactory. If the error increases as the pressure increases it is likely that the tube has weakened in service. If, on raising the pressure from zero to maximum dial pressure, the pointer is found to travel a not more than about 10% in excess of the marked scale length, then the error can be corrected by moving the connecting rod outwards along the quadrant slot. If it travels more than this, the tube needs replacement. If the amount of hysteresis at midpoint of the scale appears large, then the tube needs replacement. The need to replace the tube should not often occur in well-made and properly used gauges and it appears that such replacement is often done as a precautionary measure rather than from strict necessity. Raise the pressure to the maximum scale reading very slowly and watch the pointer closely to determine if the action of the gauge is smooth. Release the pressure slowly to observe the action during pressure fall. Jerky action usually indicates wear, jamming in the movement or linkage, or a damaged hairspring. Remove the movement. If the teeth of the gearing or the holes in the bearing plates are badly worn the movement should be replaced as a whole. Examine for wear in the connecting rod bearings and replace as necessary. If the movement is in sufficiently good condition to be used again, dismantle it, scrub the bearing plates, pinion, after removing the hair spring, and quadrant with a small stiff brush dipped in paraffin. Clean off and dry. Polish out the holes in the bearing plates with a wooden reamer and the teeth of the pinion and the quadrant can be similarly polished with a wooden strip. Pointer jumping, sticky parts, clean all bearings parts, loose hairspring, remove backlash by, disengaging pinion, rotate to tighten slowly, counterbalance, rubbing, bend if necessary to, 
Clear socket in travel point. Sluggish movement. Tight hairspring. Loosen by disengaging pinion and rotate. Replacing the pointer. Remove the bayonet or snap-on ring as previously described above. Remove old pointer with pointer extractor or two small screwdrivers opposite each other under pointer hub. Pry off evenly, being careful not to bend the pointer shaft. Install the new pointer on zero. Note, gauges with a zero stop pin must have the pointer set at a reference pressure, preferable mid-scale, to offset the preload against the stop pin. Reinstall the lens. Replacing the lens, to replace a broken lens, first check to see if the lens is held on by a bayonet or snap-on ring. To remove a bayonet ring, unscrew using a rubber belt wrench. To remove a snap-on ring, Remove any screws holding the ring in place then pry off the ring with a small screwdriver. Remove all glass chips. Insert new lens and reinsert the bayonet or snap-on ring. With snap-on rings, locate the ring joint at the bottom of the gauge. Crimp-on rings cannot be replaced once removed. Severe wear is nearly always caused by bad working conditions which should if possible be tracked down and rectified. After reassembly the movement should have a spot of clock oil applied to each bearing and any surplus oil should be wiped off. Reassemble the gauge and subject the gauge for a few seconds to a pressure about 20% in excess of the maximum dial reading. Then the gauge is recalibrated and checked. Thank you for watching this video.